What's up everybody, War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I kind of wanted to bring a conversational piece. Just something that's been kind of stirring around in the community for Diablo 4. In particular, involving the Helltides and more importantly, the Living Steel summoning item to fight Grigor. Which is what we need to go fight um, Duriel. And try our best for the, you know, the juicy uber uniques. So as you guys can see here, I am in the middle of a hell tide. And I just want to kind of talk about the basics here before we get into the nitty gritty of it. So for those who don't know, you need to farm hell tides, which is what you see me doing right now. You can see we're only 15 minutes in and I'm already over the 300 limits or not limit, but the 300 I need to open up this tortured gift of living steel. Now, if you guys don't know how to open this, okay, you can go to my video guide that I have on the channel, which is helltides.com, which will show you exactly where this is. Okay, it shows you exactly where they are on the map, just like they do with the mystery chests, etc. Okay, and as you can see, they only appear when you get close to them. Now, how to activate them is you just run up, you click the the chest, and then you're gonna fight. You're gonna fight the little boss, and then once he is done, then you can open up the chest. Now, I've talked to my community here on Twitch in great length, and I find it awesome that he dropped 666 gold. So we're going to spend 300 and open this. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this because this is what people are really upset about. Now, we got lucky. This is great for the video. So normally, these chests only drop three living seals. You're guaranteed three no matter what. On a very off chance, you can get five, which is what I just got here. Also, keep in mind that these Living Steel uh, chests give you the most amount of Forgotten Souls. Just in case if you didn't know, they give you 11. The Mystery chests give you 8, I believe. So, the issue is, and how this works is, we have 44 minutes left. And on the map, there's only 2 chests that spawn for these. So, in theory, that gives you 6 total Living Steels. Okay? Now, normally, at the half hour mark... The mystery chests move and you can reopen them. However, that doesn't happen for the living steel chest. This only happens at the top of a normal hour. Now, correct me down in the comments, guys, if I am wrong about this. We have tested this, but this is kind of what we found. Which means that in real time, it is 9.15 at the time of recording this video. If the hell tide started at 8.45, I could open, in theory, both the chests. And then at 9 o'clock... The chest would move and I could open two more, which in turn would give me 12 total living steels. And you think, hey, that's pretty good, right? 12 living steels, that's pretty awesome. However, you have to keep in mind that it does cost five living steels to actually fight Grigor. Okay? So if you were happen to be at the the chest to move before the top of the hour in real time not in hell tide time that means that every two hours roughly you could fight grigor twice and get both the items to go fight durio which means you would fight durio once every two hours however because the way hell tides work that isn't always the case all right so now you're really only getting six every other hour which means that you can only fight Grigor once every other hour. And you can fight him twice every three and a half, four hours. Now, this is all pending on playing solo. We're just looking at the numbers here. Okay? If you're looking strictly by the numbers. Now, what this does is what everybody's complaining about is the time gate that we have for the Living Steels. Now, I've talked to my community about this in great depth and in great, you know, a really good conversation. Uh, we have some solutions, but let's talk about why the time gate is bad and also why the time gate is good as I'm slaughtering these monsters. Because I need to get 300 more for the next chest. So, the biggest issue with... Having it being time gated, one of the problems is is because now we have to wait. We have to wait in order for Helltides to come around for us to farm, which in theory is only six living steels. 
Now, some might say, like, well, it is best to do this in a group. I still believe that 100% because you're going to get more tries. If everybody is farming, then you will get more opportunities to fight Grigor. Even if Grigor is only going to drop the item for the person who summons him, trading is back, so you just trade the items. It's not a big deal. So you could essentially buy runs, which would be really cool. Um, but... What that does for solo players is it's really bad because you're not able to efficiently farm enough living steels in order to fight Grigor to do sufficient Durial runs. And what we have found is that the Durial drop rate for uh, Uber Uniques is about 2%. So, in hindsight, it's really bad, right? You're stuck behind a time crunch when you can farm everything right away. You can farm every other boss right away. You can farm Beast in the Ice by just creating Nightmare Sigils. It's really easy to get Sigil Dust. You can farm Varshan from turning in Tree of Whispers from the Vamp Helltides, which is super easy to do. You can turn those in every five to seven minutes. You can turn those in and get two guaranteed pieces out of the four. And you can actually craft them to make it. Again, the only one that you really have to wait around for, like Rygor, is Zer, but I don't think Zer really drops anything too important, which makes sense why they would do that because you have to wait for the world bosses to actually be able to get the items to farm it. So, why can't we farm Duriel so much right away like we can Garshan or Beast in the Ice and some of these other bosses? A big reason to that, I think, is because they don't want too many Uber units to be found and be floating around. I'm really curious to see what Blizzard would say about how many um, Uber Uniques are, have actually been found since the uh, launch of Season 2. I would be really curious to see those numbers. I don't have them, so if somebody watching this video does, please let me know down in the comments. The next big thing is, let's talk about why it's good. The only reason that I find that it's good that we are on a so-called time gate for items to fight Grigor to go fight Curiel is because we have to think big picture. We have to think big picture. So the bosses are in the Eternal Realm and the Seasonal Realm. They are going to be in both for the remainder of the game. So in its entirety, in its lifespan, unless Blizzard decides to change their mind. But for the current time of recording, the bosses are going to be in the game permanently. I think this is a good idea. I think this is great for the game. They just need to add some more end game stuff and we'll be good. Now, when you think big picture, over the duration of the game, in theory, you should be able to farm enough of these Helltides and farm enough of the Living Steels, whether you're with a party or not. Or if you guys want to join my clan, please click on the link for the Discord. We have an amazing clan in here and amazing Discord of community members that will help out anybody. So over the lifespan of the game, this method is actually not bad when you think about it because you're going to be able to eventually farm up enough items to do it, right? Now, what frustrates a lot of players like myself is if I want to go on big major farming runs and go try to farm Durial, you know, back to back to back, I can't do that because I'm restricted by the number of living seals I can actually farm for. So, in hindsight, in the short term, I think it's bad. In the longevity of the game, if it's going to be around and this is the method, then I think it's going to be fine. It's just going to be very frustrating for players. But I think this is where trading is going to come in and you're going to be able to buy Durio runs from community members, clans, websites, and discords, etc. So now, with that said, let's talk about possible solutions, which I think some of these are really, really good. And big shout out to my community here on Twitch for helping me figure some of these out and some really good suggestions. So the first one that we thought about is the increase in the living seals that dropped from three to five. So at a minimum, you would farm two chests every other hour, which is five, 10 in total, which means you get to fight him twice, which is once an hour. So that was one solution that we thought of, which isn't too bad. The numbers kind of work out the same, but it is an idea. A lot of people have been voicing for uh, the hell ties to stay around, just like the vamp tides do every hour, but keep the number the same, which if you do that every three, you know, still being able to only open two, even if hell ties were every hour, the numbers are about the same. So if we're gonna have hell tides every hour, 
how can we increase the method here um, to really make it to where we can do more runs? So if we can do about four runs every two hours, which is two an hour, what we kind of came up with was if Hell Ties would work with the mystery chests and you were able to open four of them every time, no matter what. So even if the Hell Tides were offset like they are now, but you were guaranteed to be able to have four spawn, because what happens with mystery chests is at the 30 minute mark, which you see up here, the hell the mystery chests are gonna move. So you can, in theory, open four mystery chests every single hour if you farm enough Forgotten Souls. And as you guys can see, I'm already at well over 600. I'm about to go open up my second chest. And then that's all I can do for Living Seals for this hour of the Helltide. But now I could go open other chests, like mystery chests or open single chests or whatever that I would like to try to target for them. Yeah, I think if they would just make it to where four of them would spawn... You know, every every single time a hell tide come up and you got 12 per hour with the small rare chance that you can get five from opening one, I think that would make a very good balance of the number of times we could farm Dario per hour. It would help solo players because you could farm every two hours. You could farm him, you know, twice essentially. And then in groups, it's a little bit more. So I think those are really, really good solutions for this kind of problem. As, and as you guys saw there, I only got three again. You know, so this run I got eight, which still only allows me to fight Gregor once. So even though I got lucky with the, the chest that opened and gave me five, I could still only fight Gregor once if I had zero, right? If I, if I was starting with zero. I have 14, but I can still only fight him twice now. So now I have to wait until this hell tide's over and then for the next one to come up. So guys, I just kind of wanted to touch on this subject and just kind of give you my thoughts and ideas here. Like the video, comment down below. Let's get the conversation going to kind of help Blizzard along the way to kind of help maybe mitigate how we can farm Dario more. Because I think besides parties and buying runs and stuff, I don't know if that's literally the best way. It needs to be more accessible and be easier. Not easier, but we want to be able to constantly do it. We want to be able to constantly do it. Um, but in the longevity of it, I don't think it's the worst thing, but I want to hear your thoughts. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. See you guys in the next one. Peace.